This is the time, this is the place, this is the music intro, and this is FC3 Monkey Business, your one-stop shop for everything geeky. And since anything can be geeky if you love it enough, you never know what you're going to get. This is your host, IMC. This week we will be talking about a small thing, just a wee wee little event called the Flower City Comic Con. We will be discussing the guests, the VIPs. After that, stick around for our upcoming events and our question of the week. (laughs) How was that? Was that good? I did that good. I did that well. I was an English major in college. Really, I am. How's everybody doing? We got a, it's, it's a weird setup today because Tanya's not with us today, so I'm actually sitting in her chair so I have access to the computer. Yeah, and I'm looking over and seeing someone that's just as pretty as oh, Tanya, but, see, di- thank but, you. but <laughs> different. But different. I, I, I don't have the same curves. I really don't. No. Mine, I'm, I'm a bit flat in the wrong places. <laughs> Billy, how are you? I'm swell. And, and we've got my, my bouncing baby boy is, is hanging out with us. How, how you doing, Ian? Hello. He's working. Oh, you got to get right in there. Stop playing your game. Uh, we're, we're recording now. It's time to go to work. Recording, recording, recording. He's Hello. Recording. Hey, there he is. And Ray Hello. is in the studio, our our Power Ranger expert. How you doing, buddy? Hi. Hi. That's, long, that, time, long time. They, they don't call him the best color man in the business for nothing, people. <laughs> <laughs> very descriptive there. And Hi. we've got a ton of people on the phone today. We're going to start with our very own Deanna, because we haven't talked to Dee in ages, so we're going to put a spotlight on her for a moment. How you been, Dee? I've been good. How are you guys been? We are doing well. We're doing very well. I haven't seen you since our board meeting, what, three days ago? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's, it's been, been ages. S- it's been a, such a long time. Uh, and then <clears throat> the usual triumvirate from the Far East. Hello, Producer Sherry. Hello. Hello, Producer Chris. Hello. And hello, the bouncing monk. Hi. There she is. How you doing, Sweet Pea? Good. How good. are you guys? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. You guys keep me honest today because I can't see four of you. So there's, I'm going to be like, I'm talking to Ray. I'm going to talk to Billy. I'm going to talk to Ian. I'm going to talk to Ray. I'm going to talk to Billy. I'm gonna t- and then I might forget you're there. So feel free to cut me off halfway through. We'll just be making faces at you. That's all Oh, see, that know. works. Because I have a face for radio. So that's what works out best. Um, <laughs> all right. Billy said. Yeah. And uh, and we're going to send some well wishes out to Tanya's husband, Randy. The reason Tanya's not with us today is he's a bit laid up. He's in the hospital. They're tending to uh, all the small issues. They're going to get him fixed up and underway. So she's being she's being cool. She's keeping an eye on him for us. Uh, so we miss you, Tanya. We miss you, Randy. Hope you guys are feeling better soon. And uh, now we are off and running. Shall we jump right into sponsor shout outs, producer Sherry? Sounds good to me. Beautiful. Okay. Knox. Craft Cocktails and Comfort Foods located in the Village Gate. Selena's Mexican Restaurant, also at the Village Gate. The Great Escape Room, the Sherlock Holmes-themed Escape Adventure over on University Avenue. Wibbly Wobbly Timey Wimey, bringing us Caitlin Blackwood, the Young Amelia Pond. Pop Rock Comics, Caffeine and Culture. Sprint Arch Telecom. And Redfin Realty. I love how that list just grew a little bit over the past couple of weeks. That's good stuff Mm -hmm. right there. Uh, lots of people coming on board to give us a hand, so we appreciate all of your efforts and all of your support. I'm going to go right into more business. Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a membership platform that makes it easy for you to support Monkey Business and Flower City Comic Con. Please check us out at www.patreon.com backslash FC3ROC. All membership levels will include access to the Patreon-only blog, plus tons of great perks at all levels, including early podcast, Twitch, and FC3 information. This week, we'd like to welcome the amazing Jen Bevan to our list of Patreons. Uh, she had, Yay! Yeah, I know. Seriously, Yay! that was awesome. Woo! She Woo! was an amazing interview and now one of our incredible patrons. So thank you, Jen. This is this is um, this is is something I want to actually see happen more of. We, we interview somebody and then they become a patron. That, that would be cool. <laughs> start getting... Yeah, no, it really is. She she liked being on the show so much, she decided to support us. I love it. I love it, and I thank it, and that is awesome. Uh, Now we're going to jump down to Apple Podcasts while I continue my game show contestant, or my game show host voice here. Uh, (laughs) Apple Podcasts want to help others find the show. Please leave us a, a review on Apple Podcasts. This is the single easiest way to support the show and encourage others to listen. Every review will be thanked on the air, and any questions will be answered. We want this to be a conversation, so please send us your questions. In addition to Apple Podcasts, you can find us on Google Play, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and Stitcher. Is there a place you find your podcast but you can't find FC3 Monkey Business? Let us know, and we will work to correct that. And please follow us on Twitter 
at at FC3MB podcast. And if you do, please say hi. We love it when you say hi because we will say hi. Well, Sherry will say hi back because she kind of <laughs> runs the roost okay. on that puppy. All so, we need or, to do now, Chris, is get a SoundCloud. And we get get a sound. See, we were talking about SoundCloud. We what? Why did we not jump into SoundCloud? I think we had a good reason for Didn't it. Didn't I hear SoundCloud was going out of business or something? Something like I think that was something. But also, I think it's because the subscription was a little expensive for us at the moment. I don't really? know. It's a little expensive, uh-huh. and um, from everything I hear, it doesn't give the bang for the buck that it used to. Oh, so. I was just being funny. I didn't know you guys actually tried to get a SoundCloud. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, we were on that. We were doing it. We we check everything seriously. When somebody suggests something, we will check it out. So, um, other than that, it, how are we doing? Are we okay? We're good? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, well, you guys are two weeks away from, two a weeks convention away from the as convention as we record this. Yeah. And I'm a week and a half away from going to New York City. <laughs> to see Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. See, Billy is the smartest person in the entire Mighty Monkey organization. The convention is about to happen. He is going to be a couple hundred miles away. <laughs> and actually, but he's got a really good reason, though. Yeah, Springsteen. You can't argue that and, one. And my uh, oh. list of things to do has grown even more. I'm going to see Colbert. Uh, oh, the Stephen nice. Colbert show. Oh, going to see nice. Sp- nice. Going to see, uh, as you said, Springsteen. Got tickets to see uh, Beautiful on okay. Broadway, the Carol King oh, musical. Oh, amazing. Which cool. the night before starts the run of Melissa Benoist as Carol King. She plays Supergirl. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she's got a hell of a yeah. pipe. She's, yeah. I remember Whoa. seeing her on Glee. On Glee. She used to be she on Glee. So now we have Glee. tickets for that. We're going to a Mets Yankees game. Mm-hmm. I've got tons of stuff to do. Going to a David wow, Bowie that's exhibit. That's going to be an amazing time, Billy. Yeah. I, I seriously, can I go with you? Can yeah. I just be your valet? I'll carry yours what, and Susan's I, luggage around. I think what Billy is trying to say is. Hey guys, look at all the cool stuff I get to no, do. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I honestly wish it was a different weekend than the yeah. convention because I'd I love going to that, and you guys do a fantastic job. And Thank you. All that, but I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. This, this, these are the things that happen. It's okay. We'll be doing other ones, you yeah. know. And um, oh, uh, we're going to mention this again next week. But real quick, quick, quick. This is the first, last two episodes of season two. We're, we're wrapping up season two, finally, of The Monkey Business, and we're going to be taking a break so that we can, you know, get, kind of do the convention mm-hmm. and let the dust settle and do the, you know, the aftermath of the convention and get things all squared away. And then we'll be back with season three probably at the end of June, early July. So if, if this end were... of June, we'll be back. And uh, <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about how the show went. Unless Fox cancels us. In, in the in the off season, but somebody could pick us up. That's right. We can get picked up by somebody else. Netflix, Netflix, yeah. by net, we'll get we'll get picked up by Netflix or something like that. <laughs> or so. or since we're a comic book kind of thing, we can get picked up by the CW. There you go. Oh, see, we have a very diverse cast, so that would work out really well <laughs> exactly. in our favor. We'll, we'll probably come we up right be after the Riverdale. Season of Firefly. We could be the second <laughs> season. Of Firefly. Do I get Do I get to be um, Do I get to be River? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're too tall. I'm too tall to be River. Our show can come up right after Riverdale. Okay. I will be... Um, Background oh, character number okay, six. No, I see. I, I, I had the, the comment popped into my head, but I know the speaker button's going to get hit if I do it. So. <laughs> hey, I had, to, I had to press that button a couple weeks ago. Yeah. We yeah. don't pay you to talk pretty. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking I could, I, could, I could be cast as Inara's shuttle and she could just ride me around all episode long. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Now we will never get now we will never get Marina on the show oh. ever. Thanks, Chris. No, you never know that. Come on. That's a thing. I'm sure she's heard worse. <laughs> she's been on the oh, Gotham no. set she's for God's sake. Worse than Deadpool, so. Yeah, seriously. I mean she's been on Deadpool for God's sake. She's heard well worse than me. Uh, <laughs> I one hundred percent concur with that statement. Yeah. Come on. Apparently, she actually wrote See? the uh, the ring pop gag. So I'm just going to say that. Oh be dead, uh, you wanted to be uh, Ryan Reynolds. There you go. There you go. Who doesn't want to be Ryan Reynolds? I'm telling you. Married to Blake Lively, got Deadpool 1 and 2. You got all, you know. I'm even happy about Green Lantern. I'll say it. I thought it was a fun movie. I, I will always yeah, love the, the fact that he makes fun of Green Lantern. It's that great. makes me happy. All right. So we're going to take a quick break. So back to Nathan Fillion. Yeah, there you go. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to start talking about what is FC3 and how how it's going to all come together this year. Not sure if you avid listeners knew about this, but the FC3 Monkey Business Podcast is part of the Mighty Monkey Corporation, something we talk about usually during the closing credits. Uh, The main product 
of the Mighty Monkey Corporation is the Flower City Comic Con, a multi-genre convention, bringing you not just a convention, but a full-on experience. This week on Monkey Business, we're going to be talking about the guests you will be able to see and meet at the convention this coming June 9th and 10th at the Floriano Rochester Riverside Convention Center. Uh, we got a long list of them here. I'm looking at a long list of names here, and this is kind of cool because we've always tried to really bring a diverse panel of folks, and I think we've done a pretty good job of it this year. I agree. <clears throat> All right. So right off top of the list, we'll, we'll talk about the first girl who signed on, Caitlin Blackwood, otherwise known from Doctor Who as the young Amelia Pond. Uh, so this young lady on, at 3 o'clock on Saturday... And panel room one will be doing her, her question and answer session. Uh, Caitlin was cast in the role of Amelia Pond, the younger version of her real-life cousin's character, Amy Pond, in Doctor Who, opposite Matt Smith, where they famously shared a variety of food before settling on fish fingers and custard for him and an ice cream for her. She went on to reprise the role in several more episodes with the Doctor, but it would be her older cousin who traveled through space and time whilst she, little Amelia Pond, waited. She was the girl who waited. Caitlin recently completed filming her first short film with award-winning director Ryan Hendrick and follow Doctor Who companion Fraser Hines, Jamie McCrimmon, in the show. Uh, Caitlin is currently attending college in Edinburgh and hopes to pursue a career in acting. Uh, how, okay, everybody here, we're all pretty excited to meet this girl. Yes. Yeah. This is kind of yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. Really. I've seen a couple of her, um, her convention appearances on YouTube, and she's just a charming young lady. Just absolutely charming young lady. It's a lot of fun. So she will be in panel room one, Saturday, 3 o'clock. And then when she's not there, she'll be doing the photo ops, and she'll be on VIP row signing autographs and getting a chance to chat with some folks. And Plus hopefully some day. VIP experience with her, too. Oh, is there a VIP experience with her? Yes, there is. Yes, on Sunday. On Sunday. On Sunday? Okay, cool. And that's, I think I, I know that that was going to be an additional, that was an additional price. That was an additional that's ticket additional price. price. Yeah. Yep, all okay. the info is on Grotex. So if you really want to have some time sitting down with, with Caitlin and getting to know her, there's going to be VIP experience on Sunday, I was just Go hoping. Ahead, I, I was hoping that someday, Guardians of the Galaxy, she'll be the young Nebula. That would be cool. That would, that would be, be a awesome. certain kind of like a. Do- that would be a cool Doctor Who callback. I think that would be interesting. Um, and then from she here, looks more and more like her cousin. I as she grows up, yes, I've seen that. Like you put this the, when she was little, she was this cute little little redhead, mm-hmm. and then of course. You know, Karen Gillan is this statuesque, you know, she has right. legs that go for days mm-hmm. and the, the long red hair. But now as Caitlin is growing up, you see the, the facial features are, she's shifting. There's and a family resemblance. The family resemblance is strong. It is, it is impressive. Yeah. All right. Sherry, who's next? Next is Eric Avari. He's going to be in panel room one again. He'll be Saturday at one o'clock. And then he will be back in panel room one Sunday at 12 o'clock. All right. Okay. During his 30 years as an actor, Eric Avari has consistently turned in finely crafted performances from grand opera to soap opera. And I just absolutely love I love that line. Love That's that. great. <laughs> With stops on and off Broadway, regional theaters, and in some of the highest grossing films of the past two decades, hit television series and award-winning independent films. This guy's done everything. He really is. He's one and of those. He's, he's one of those like Kevin Bacon faces. He's he, you recognize him. He's in everything. Oh, that he's oh that yeah. guy. It's that guy. Yeah, he's one of my absolute favorite. Oh, it's that guy. I love him. Mm-hmm. He's always consistently excellent yes. in everything that he does. Um, he's recognizable from his roles in things like Mr. Deeds, To the Mummy, Stargate, Independence Day, Daredevil. He also lent his talents to uh, dramatic roles like American East, Dark Matter, Three Days of Rain. Um, he's been on a lot of TV, Heroes, L.A. Dragnet, Stargate SG-1, Felicity, Dirty Sexy Money, and Law & Order Criminal Intent. 24? Um, he's been, I'm sorry, what? Was he on 24? I think so. I'm not I sure. Let I me check that out. I think so. I I've got think the, so. I've got the Tanya seat today, so I should be looking at the computer right now. <laughs> But carry on. But he's but he's been a trailblazer for uh, South Asian actors in Hollywood. Um, he really he has turned down many roles uh-huh. because they were stereotypical bad guys. Okay, and he just didn't and want to be associated with that. He does. He thinks that that's an unfair stereotype, and he's actively fighting against it. 
to the point where he just won't take roles that could have made him a lot of money, mm-hmm. given him a lot of exposure. But he's like, no, there's too many South Asian bad guys today, mm-hmm. and I'm just not going to do that. And I think that's really amazing. To uh, answer Billy's question, I do not see him on uh, his list as 24. I don't see him as being a part of 24. It's probably because he wouldn't do stereotypical roles. There you go. Yeah, probably. Who wants to go up against uh, Jack Bauer anyway? Exactly. Seriously. I loved him in A Mummy, though. <laughs> yeah, in A Mummy, he was great. Are we going to have to do a Fifty Shades of Eric Avari sometime? <laughs> Fifty Shades? 50 that, shades. That, that sounds sexier than Six than Degrees. Six, yeah. degrees. Six Degrees. Damn it. Degrees. What is your mother exposing you to? Um, <laughs> Holy crap, dude. <laughs> what does Ericavari look like in leather underwear? Holy Moses! Oh, no, now, no. now, Eric, Eric likes to go from convention to convention in his own RV with his with his dog. Um, but unfortunately, because of Eric's it, back issues, he's uh, he's had some back issues, so he is going to be flying in. Uh, so we're going to be putting him up in the hotel and hanging out with him here. Um, but and, and hopefully he'll be doing some media Friday morning. For yeah, us. hopefully. I, th- I believe he actually is going to be on the media run Friday morning. Yeah, I think he is. So, so that should be out. cool. Definitely look for him. Look and listen for him on sun, on Friday, and we will definitely get that posted where we're going to be. So right. you all can check him out in, live and in person. Sounds good to me. Nice. Sounds real good to me. Who's next on our hit parade of fun? Okay, that would be me. We have Beth Broderick, who will be in panel room one. Saturday at 2. Okay. And she is uh, most notable for her portrayal of the character Zelda Spellman in Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, cool. And that's that show's getting a reboot, and isn't Zelda. it? Yeah, it's getting yes. a dark reboot for uh, CW. Okay. You got to get in on that mic. Sorry. There you go, Ray. We're still teaching you how to be on the mic, man. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. So carry on, my wayward son. What else do we got for Beth? Okay. She also has re- has had uh, recurring roles as Diane Jansen in, in Lost mm-hmm. and Rose Twitchell in Under the Dome. Oh, okay. Where she was with one of our first FC3 guests, uh, Mackenzie Lintz. Or was it Madison? We had Madison. I don't remember. Yeah. They all blend together. <laughs> yeah. Madison, Mackenzie, Matthew, and Maxon. It's the, the Lintz kids. I, I can't keep them straight. One of them was Under the Dome. One of them was Under the Dome and on FC3. So... Carrying on. Now, this is something extremely interesting and, and really, really neat about Beth. She stopped acting for a few years to dedicate herself to dealing with the AIDS crisis in the early 80s. Hmm. When she was 27, she started acting again, and she made Stealing Home and The Bonfire of the Vanities. Oh, that was so a great movie, too. And Stealing Home was a good movie, too. She's also appeared in several theater productions like Carnal Knowledge Mm-hmm. Triple C uniform and best stories. Best Razi. How do you say that? <laughs> what is it? Best Razi, the master oh. of discipline. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which she also co produced. Gotcha. In New York, she starred in The Mousetrap, The Lion in Winter, and many more. Beth is not only an actress, she's also a writer, and she's written A Cup of Joe, Wonderland, and Literati with Dennis Bailey. Mm hmm. She's also been a director and directed an episode of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, wow. Okay. And back to uh, the AIDS crisis. Um, she's been active in the battle against AIDS since 1984, mm-hmm. and she's the founding director of Momentum, one of the first organizations in New York established to assist people with AIDS. Okay. She was also a founding member of Celebrity Action Council of... The City Lights Women Rehabilitation Program at the Los Angeles Mission, which provides hands-on service to homeless women and helps them overcome substance abuse and learn job skills to help reclaim their lives and families. So Beth has been busy, is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Beth, Beth has not been an idle person at all. All right. It's Beth- really nice seeing someone who puts their celebrity to really good use, and it, she always has. You know, being a humanitarian is... It's a wonderful thing when you're in a position to actually make a difference. Now, Ray, what's going on? I said, can you underline the one that... Yeah, you're going to be getting the, the next one after after Ian. All right. Cool. And so we're going to we're gonna move from Beth. I'm going to move on to... And now, I'm, I'm doing this to torture Ray because he's our resident Power Ranger expert. We have a Power Ranger today, but I'm going to have Ian actually introduce that person to us because torturing Ray is entertaining to me. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now. I'm just going to be open and honest about it. 
So, so Ian, take us away. We have, all right, wait, wait. We have Catherine Sutherland. She has a panel. Uh, she's taking panel room one Saturday, five, 5 o'clock p.m. to 5.45 p.m. Okay. We have the Australian-born actress Catherine Sutherland is known for playing Catherine, Cat, Hill, Hillard, 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 in the Pink Ranger. Ray, Ray is over there going, just, he's wringing his hands going, oh my God, come on. I know, I know. <laughs> She's the Pink Ranger in the kids' show Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. She continues her role for three seasons in Power Rangers Range. Power Rangers Zero, Power Rangers Turbo, Zero. and Power Rangers... No, from here on in, I'm calling it Power Rangers Zero. <laughs> Just don't, don't let you know that now. That's Z- happening. Zero. <laughs> You're okay, buddy. Finish it up. You're doing good. Doing great. It's Zero now. Okay. It is. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up now. Power Rangers Zero. All right. Power Rangers Turbo <laughs> and Power Rangers Turbo the movie. With over 100 episodes filmed in the series, Catherine was most... Certainly, may <clears throat> most certainly made her mark in the industry. After Power Rangers, she went on to perform in the film The Cell and various commercials. Although she is rarely in front of the camera these days, Catherine is focused on her creative energy on writing and publishing her first children's book series. Oh, that's cool. Her greatest joy in life is raising her two children with her husband in California. Nice. And reunions of the Power Rangers Zero cast. I'm going to punch everybody do, in this call. Do, do you know what they like to drink? Coke Zero? Coke Zero. They probably do. On Power Rangers Zero. Here, hand this over to Ray so he can do the one at the bottom. There you go, Ray. The very last you one at the bottom. Favorite candy bar is Zero Bar. Zero <laughs> Bar. You know what's funny? There is a Power Rangers Zero out there. It is? But, it? It, but it's it's like the, the pilot episode oh, okay. and stuff like that. How funny is that? That is pretty funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, Ray, take us away with who's next. Sure, why not? <laughs> He's going to start reading Catherine Sutherland's script. He's going to start reading the Catherine Sutherland script. I, can I tell. actually thought about it just to be a dork. But... Yeah, no, you already are a dork. That's just to be one. Jump in. Jump in. Let's go. Come on. Next up is Josh Herdman. Yep. I think I said that right? Yes, you did. Uh, he will be in panel room one Saturday from 4 p.m. to 4.45. Nice. Tell us about Josh. Making his first U.S convention appearance josh started acting at seven years old after his dad got him an agent well then somebody didn't have fun in elementary school there you go <laughs> uh he appeared in several commercials and had some small tv parts before auditioning for harry potter and the philosopher's stone at 13 ah i see why you gave this one to me now yes because he's a <laughs> slytherin just like you are see he originally auditioned for dudley uh dursley uh where he got where, where ooh can't read today where he got down <laughs> to the last two boys uh-huh he was inv- invited back to, to audition for georgie georgie goyle gosh <laughs> Ten- gregory. <laughs> gregory gregory goyle i'm very <laughs> it's one of those days see it's not uh, only me he was invited back to, to audition for gregory goyle 10 years of filming ensued josh played various parts on his on other productions throughout the filming of harry potter series and continues to his acting career to date. Nice. And uh, also, he's got the Robin Hood movie coming up soon. Yes, he does. Is he in it? Is yes. he in that one? He's in it with uh, Taron Edgerton from um, 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 the, the, the Kingsman. Kingsman, thank from you. Kingsman. He's, uh, also, he's also the, 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 the gorilla from Sing. Is he really? Yeah, that's him. That's cool. And Jamie Foxx is in it. he's also that. gotten into yeah. MMA, too. Yes, yeah, that's the thing yeah. that we're going to be talking about there's with more. him. There's more. Oh, there's more? He's reading. There's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Dun, there's dun, more. dun. All right. Josh likes to spend his free time with his family, riding motorbikes and training. He has been training in the martial arts for almost six years and holds a black belt in traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu. Huh. He also trains and comp- competes in MMA. Josh had his debut uh, amateur fight in April two- 2006, 16, <laughs> which he won. He, he and his fiance are raising three children. Wow. He's a busy boy. And if I'm but correct, you know, he's like part about three years older than me. Yeah. The coolest part about Josh Common is this is his first U.S. convention. I'm loving that. We those are, those are some serious bragging rights US there. U.S. convention. 
I know I know uh, a little Slytherin girl who's been emailing me the last couple of days who's excited to meet him. A little Southern girl? Slytherin. Slytherin girl. Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> do you know somebody down south they don't know? Actually, I do know somebody from, from down right. south. All right. All right, who's, who's got our next friend? We have yeah. Jerome St. John Blake. Okay. He's going to be in Panel Room 3 on Sunday from 11 to 11.45. Saturday. Um, on Saturday, yes. Um, he was a musician for 20 years, and then he made the transition to acting. Uh, he broke into feature films with First Night and he, as a member of the Royal Guard to Sean Connery's King Arthur. How cool must have that been on the set? Yeah, seriously. You know? <laughs> I'm a then he question. went and worked in The Fifth Element. Another bunch of cool people to work with, mm-hmm. which heralded the start of a long involvement with creature effects work for him, which later includes dun, da, 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 all three of the Star Wars prequel trilogies. Nice. Anna Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith, and the feature film version of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, his most recent work has been in theater, and he's appeared in One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest on London, on London as uh, Chief Brondon opposite Christian Slater's R.P. McMurphy. That's a cast. I like to see yeah. seriously because yeah. Christian Slater has enough channeling Jack Nicholson in his career over the years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very My true. goodness, he's got Jack on speed dial. Jack, am I doing this right? You know, yeah. can you give me some tips? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need to. He doesn't need any tips. He just needs to look in the mirror. <laughs> wow, he's been in some really neat stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know the, they did the a film version of Hitchhiker's Guide. Freaking amazing! Yeah, Martin Freeman was in that. Deal. Yeah, Fr- Martin Freeman was Arthur Dent in that one, with ah. most deaf as Harrison or not Harrison Ford, uh, Ford Prefect. <laughs> yes, and Sam Rockwell was Zaphod, mm-hmm. and it was Zoe oh, wow. Deschanel as yeah, yeah. Uh, Trillion. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Marvin. And, oh, that was Alan Rickman was Marvin, the the, yes. the paranoid yes. android, the late great that Marvin. Was great. I... I know you're not a huge fan of the movie, Chris, but you got to right. admit it was an amazing cast. Oh, God, yeah. Hands down. I can't argue that fact at all. It just was a you know, you know, it, poorly executed it, movie. It was a fun movie. <laughs> See, for a person who's know. read the books on several occasions and listened to the audio plays and whatnot, the movie was just like, oh, what the hell happened here? But, but yeah. yeah. Jerome, it, I'm really looking American, forward. So, you know. Yeah. True. Really looking forward to, to, you know, with Jerome being here to just get. You know, I mean, he worked with Liam Neeson and mm-hmm. uh, Ewan McGregor in that first movie. So, you know, I, to talk to him about that experience is going to be pretty cool. Oh, yeah. It's getting a chance to see some of the stuff, get some insight from behind the scenes of, of things that we, we know and love. So that's good stuff. You know, stuff. think about it, You go from a little kid playing, you know, Anakin Skywalker, and then the next movie you've got, you know, Hayden Christensen. And, right. You know, um, oh, Padme, what's her name? I can't Natalie her Portman. Name. Yeah, you know, Natalie Portman. It's like, you know, he works with some heavy hitters in those movies. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, to get his perspective on that, it's going to be really cool. I'm really thrilled he's coming to uh, the convention this year. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah. All right. So for our next contestant from the lovely state of Maine, we're going to be going to Billy, our resident, resident wrestling expert. Hello, Maine. You're on the air. Hello, sir. <laughs> uh, if you're a wrestling fan, and I am, this next guest is a legitimate wrestling legend. Jake the Snake Roberts. Be at uh, FC3 all weekend long and doing a panel in panel room one from noon until 1245 on Saturday. Yep. Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts is an American actor and semi-retired professional wrestler, best known for his two stints in the WWF, later WWE, the first between 1986 and 92, second between 95 and 97. He wrestled for the NWA, National Wrestling Alliance, the WCW, and uh, the Mexican-based AA, oh, the AAA League between 93 yep. and 94. And again in 97, he appeared in ECW. And I loved ECW. It was a good, <laughs> that was a good show. Yeah, I definitely. loved ECW. During the summer of 97, made a, uh, appearances for TNA Wrestling, total nonstop wrestling action from 2006 through 2008. Throughout his career, he's best known for his intense and cerebral promos, his dark charisma, his extensive use of psychology in his matches, and his an innovative use of the DDT finishing move. And he was the first guy I knew who used the DDT. Now yep. it's common, but yeah. he was the master of the DDT and, and knocked people out with it, uh, which was named the coolest maneuver of all time by WWE. He was brought... Let's see. Oh, he also brought snakes into the ring, most famously a python named Damien. I was hoping he'd bring Damien 
to FC3. <laughs> that would be uh, interesting. That would be kind of awesome. Uh, Roberts, uh, he had a, a whole bunch of personal problems throughout his career, which were very well documented. And the uh, 1999 documentary Beyond the Mat, I own that on DVD, and it's an excellent movie. Okay. Even if you don't like wrestling, I think check out Beyond the Mat. Just get a little insight uh, behind the scenes. Kind he, of thing. He's cleaned himself well, up over the that. years. And uh, or he's he's got himself cleaned up uh, way past what you saw in Beyond the Mat. And in 2012, Roberts moved, and with fellow wrestler Diamond Dallas Page, who is a big motivational guy, so I can mm-hmm. see how uh, Jake Roberts straightened out his life to seek help in getting his life back on track. Okay, I just said that. <laughs> uh, following years of alcohol and drug abuse, he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in April 5th of 2014. And like I said, Jake the Snake Roberts just seems like he he is a legit oh, WWE yeah. legend. When people talk about professional yeah. wrestling, they talk about Hulk yeah. Hogan, they talk about Andre the Giant, but in the next breath, it's usually Jake the yeah. Snake Roberts. Jake the Snake Roberts is a guy people remember. Yeah, so exactly. Stop by and meet Jake at FC3. And you know, yeah, he was one of my Jake. absolute favorite wrestlers growing up. Mm-hmm. And what was that, D? Speaking of meeting Jake, we had, there's a VIP meet and greet with him on Sunday. Okay. Um, so definitely want if you want that, you know, more a little more personalized time. On, definitely get yourself a, a ticket for that because he has a little bit of stand up now. Um, so I'm sure, you know, he's definitely has the ability to, to interact with people very well, and he might even tell us a few jokes along the way. You never know. That got, that I got a kick out of the fact that he's actually doing stand-up routines. There's a bunch of wrestlers right now doing stand-up. A couple have visited Rochester recently to uh-huh. varying yeah, degrees H- of Hexa, success. Yeah, Duggan, Hockey Talk Man. Yeah. Uh, Raven um, was just here. Is it Raven was just here. Uh, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Mick Foley does stand-up now. So it seems to oh, be... Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah. Because... Uh, you know, wrestling, because of the promos, you do have a natural ability to sort of interact with the crowd. And, and entertain. Entertain. Yeah. And, and I think it's a natural sort of side gig for wrestlers. Yeah. It, it just kind of goes to show. For them. It just goes to show. My, my buddy Paul, who I used to live with back in the day after college, uh, he always called wrestling, professional wrestling, with sudden violent comedy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it just kind of fits in with that. <laughs> just kind of fits in with that. Look at what The Rock's been able to do. Oh, I know. Oh, my God. Turn it, he's turned it into a, a serious Dave acting Batista. career. Dave Batista. Yeah, Dave Batista has definitely made a, yeah. a name for himself. the biggest movie in the world right now. Only, only the biggest, yeah. yeah. All right, who's so, next on our hit parade of fun here? Back, oh, okay, go ahead, Chris. Piper did it. Mm-hmm. Um, Hulk Hogan was in a couple things. Yeah, but here's the Andre thing. The with, 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 Roddy, with Roddy Piper and with Hulk Hogan, nobody really took them seriously. Although They Live no. is a pretty good movie. Uh, yeah. Well, it, yeah, it kind of pushed things. Though. It did. It you did. Know, it helped push it that envelope that open other, for other guys other to come through. Do. Yeah, very cool. So who's on our? Who's next on our hit parade of fun here? You, me, you. I'm doing this one. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. I'm about to say Chris is a guest. This one's neat. I am a guest. <laughs> I am a guest in, in a padded room. All right, <laughs> Carrie O'Quinn, panel room three, Saturday, June 9th, ten uh, from uh, three three to three forty five, and then again in panel room two on Sunday. 12 to 1245 creating and publishing two dozen monthly national newsstand magazines carrie has become a hollywood legend he founded and was heavily involved in such publications as starlog fangoria gore zone comic scene future life and cinemagic just to name a few their publishing company would go on to become the world's largest producer of licensed movie and tv magazines and special edition souvenir publications Carrie later launched O'Quinn Productions, creating and developing a variety of programs for such companies as Paramount and HBO. For the produ- excuse me, for the production of Future Tales, he assembled more than 40 of the world's greatest science fiction authors to script episodes that would envision the world of tomorrow, including Isaac Asimov, Sir Arthur C. Clarke, Harlan Ellison, David Gerald, and Ray Bradbury. He even produced a line of soundtrack albums such as The Avengers, First Men in the Moon, Rocket Ship XM, It's Alive 2, and the London Studio Symphony Orchestra's digital rendition of North by Northwest. Hmm. So this man has been, he's been involved in a lot. Uh, O'Quinn moved into producing live events with creation conventions. The Academy of Science Fiction, Horror, and Fantasy Films presented Carrie with a Saturn Award for Life Service. A few years ago, he sold the company and moved from Manhattan to Hollywood to write and produce. With North American distribution from Gravitas Ventures, Carrie will present his documentary, From the Bridge, 
celebrating the vast worldwide fandom audience of proud nerds and geeks. The feature documentary includes interviews with 30 amazing creative icons such as Stan Lee, Gene Simmons, and so many more. So this, just having Carrie on board, just the wealth of experience and knowledge that he's got about the culture, and it's just, it's just going to be insane. It's mm-hmm. going to be absolutely amazing to meet him. I remember getting his magazines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I had Starlog for a while when I was a kid. I was Ian's age. I think I had a, I had a subscription to Starlog. Me too. So, and then I, I coaxed my dad into letting me have a subscription to Heavy Metal, and then my mom saw the first issue, and that was it. That that got canceled quickly. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but Starlog, I got to keep for a little while. So that was cool. So, but I yeah. had tons of friends who who subscribed to Fangoria. Mm-hmm. I used to get Cinemagic. It was yeah, he very quality, good pictures. Mm-hmm. A lot of them were hanging on my wall. <laughs> Other girls had Sean Cassidy, and you had Fangoria. <laughs> oh, How old do you think I am? <laughs> You're not that much younger than I am, kiddo. So yeah, I know I know exactly. right where you are. So Sean Cassidy, no. Come on. Anyway. Oh no! Oh no! My sister and I had the most bizarre bedroom. My side was Metallica, Megadeth, Iron Maiden, Alice Cooper. Her side, New Kids on the Block. Nice. It was awesome. That is wow, great. Talk about the spectrum on that one. Seriously. <laughs> well, we were five years old in age, so it made sense. So she had the right stuff, is what you're saying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I grew up on all those bands and stuff, so it's okay for me. All right, so where are we here? We're, we're next on the list. Who's got the next? I do. I'm actually going to do two because they kind of go together. Sherry, take Um, us home. We are having a Walking Dead dead panel Mm -hmm. in panel room one on Sunday at 11 o'clock. And we're going to actually have two people at that. The first one is Gregory French. Um, Gregory is a stunt actor best known for his many appearances in The Walking Dead. He's played around 20 different walkers from seasons three through six. His other television credits include Under the Dome, Revolution, Vampire Diaries, Sleepy Hollow, Banshee, Ozark, and Outcast. And his movie credits include Spider-Man Homecoming, Iron Man 3, Parental Guidance, We're the Millers, Weekend Warriors, The Last of Our Days, and the horror film Ghost Witch. He's currently in production on a fantasy thriller called The Town of... I'm going to say Samhain, which is the correct pronunciation, but I can almost guarantee that they're pronouncing it Samhain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because then there's the, you know, the, the uneducated few out there. <laughs> yeah. uh. um, he's a regular at conventions and considers himself to be an all-around super nerd. <laughs> he is an, Gregory's an avid comic book collector and cosplayer. He's a member of the 501st, the R2 Builders Club, and the Doctor Who Costuming Academy as well as a contributing member of the Replica Prop Forum and the survivalist groups The Zombie Squad and Zombie E, <laughs> which, he, which he feels helps get him into his various roles on The Walking Dead. So we have to introduce him to the uh, to our local chapter of the 501st who will be on site. Absolutely. Because that will be a great, great hook up there. Yeah. And then joining Gregory will be Michael. Uh, please tell me if I'm massacring this poor man's name. Casca? I think it's Casca. Casca? That's what okay. we've, been, we've been pronouncing it, Casca. So, okay. so obviously so, we're all wrong. We're all probably all wrong, yeah. Um, he's, a, he's an actor living and working in middle Georgia. His acting credits include frequent appearances on, as a walker mm-hmm. on The Walking Dead. His zombie likeness has, has appeared on TV, on T-shirts, figures, playing cards, and other official merchandise. And he's graced the pages of Entertainment Weekly, TV Guide, The Walking Dead Official Magazine, and the cover of The Ultimate Guide to Zombies. Rolling Stone Magazine, and most recently, the cover of TV Guide. He's also appeared on the originals, Necessary Roughness, The Crazies, The Following, Hunger Games, Catching Fire, Need for Speed, Goosebumps, Captain America, Civil War, and uh, the third Divergent movie, Allegiant. Sleepy Hollow, Hidden Figures, and most recently, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is one of Yondo's Ravagers and in per- Pitch Perfect Three. All right, I got to know how do you go from being a Ravager to being in Pitch Perfect Three? <laughs> how does that work? That's <laughs> exactly the same role. <laughs> it's exact. So, so you're saying the Ravagers were singing in Pitch Perfect Three? Per- you didn't uh, know there were zombies in it. That's okay. I did not know there were zombies <laughs> in Pitch Perfect Three. 
See, I, so I, they're all ravaging. Maybe, maybe oh, his geez. name in Pitch Perfect Three as a zombie was Taserface. That oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not going there. So. And Michael he, frequently appears at conventions in support of his second life as a member of the undead community. Lovely. Nice. That's lovely. I'm looking forward to meeting these guys. They sound like it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, and with yeah. Gregory French, and I didn't realize he was in Banshee. Mm-hmm. Banshee was written by David Schickler, who was from Rochester. Oh, is he? Um, I know David. I grew up with David, and he's written a few books, um, and he's done a lot of work in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And he was his one big, his most recent project that I'm aware of was Banshee. Okay. So I think that's kind of cool that Gregory's coming here. You know, when the one of the writers and uh, creators and producer was is from here. That's very cool. That was an interesting show, by the way. Banshee. Yeah, very strange. I haven't seen any of it. I've only heard that it was, you know, worth trying to take a watch of it one of these days. Yeah, it's it's one of the it's a binge worthy kind of show. Okay, I'm in on that. So right now, that's our VIP row. Those are some of the folks you can expect Woo-hoo. to meet to be able to get uh, VIP VIP experiences. Those are going to be extra How panels. How many? Um, let's count it out here. We got one. Jeez. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten folks total. Nice. Yeah, I think we did good. We did really good in, in that because I know there's some years we've done like four, five, six. So mm-hmm. we're really kind of pushing the, the numbers this year. So that's kind of cool. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on, on the line and seeing how this all fits together. This is going to be a lot of fun. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to run through some events. We're going to talk about where you can get tickets for FC3. And we have our question of the week. A couple months ago, I got really into Harry Potter. Have you got? Oh, it's really good. The books, I, I'm not done with them. No spoilers. I'm on book six. But like, I resisted for years because I was like, if that many people like it, how good could it be? Pretty f- good. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty f- good. And not just from a magic thing, like from a vicarious standpoint, you know, because it's this kid, he transfers, and then his life is completely different. And like, I transferred in high school, and it was awful. It was, like, if people, like, disliked me just because I was new. Like, on Valentine's Day, these <laughs> send a girl a bouquet with my name on them, and then a bird had <laughs> on my head, and I hid in the library all day. That is a true story. <laughs> None of that is lies. But how awesome would it have been if I transferred and everybody was like, you're Kumail Nanjiani? You're the most famous boy in the world! You are now the seeker on the Quidditch team! <laughs> like Quidditch. But here's my only thing with Harry Potter. This is my only issue with it. So they, uh, uh, they, they go to the school and they take classes like uh, defense against the dark arts and potions and divination. But they should be taking like math also, right? <laughs> Why are there no math teachers at Hogwarts? Or history or geography? They're getting tested on care of magical creatures. Never heard of the Holocaust. <laughs> important information, I think. <laughs> and I don't think they're getting to it in the uh, history of magic. I don't think they're like, if you think Voldemort is evil, this <laughs> guy. <laughs> he didn't even have the killing curse. He had to do it. He used engineering. Engineering, is that one of the unforgivable curses? No, it's just a practical yeah. application of physics. Physics, is that one of the unforgivable? Yes, it is. <laughs> Come on then, Johnny. If you haven't seen the movie The Big Sick, by the way, it's uh-huh. not nerd related. It's just a really, really good movie. I think I remember seeing the trailer for that one. Yeah. That, that was really well received. I want to yeah. see that. Yeah. All okay. right. So we, we've talked about some of our folks on. Well, we've talked about our folks on VIP row. We do have some guest artists, right, D? Yes, we do. Um, first one is definitely Rob Dumo is going to be here, mm-hmm. um, along with Nick Wentland from Broken Icon Broken Icon Comics. Rob. Um, one, I also want to point out, Rob designed our program this year. He designed the program cover. Yes. Yes, and which is spectacular. Fabulous. Oh, my God, it's so awesome. It's fabulous. <laughs> so, you know, he, they'll be here. Um, Ken Wheaton's back again this year. Awesome. Um, he was with us last year, so he's back. We have Jeff Klein mm-hmm. from Darby Pop. Okay. We also have Megan J. Parker and Nathan Squires, who are writers. They're oh, going to wow, be here, cool. too. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Somebody help me out. 
Uh, Derek Donovan. Did we talk about yes, Derek Donovan coming thank in? Thank you. Derek Donovan is going to be here along with Diana Leto. Diana so, Leto. You know, those are our artists that are going to be here this year. So definitely come and check out their work. And you also get a chance to talk to them as well. And, you know, maybe they'll give you a hint as to what they're up to. Diana was with us last year at the uh, the Seventeen show. Absolute sweetheart. She's done work with uh, Sesame Street, Nickelodeon, and a whole ton of others. And she's just, just an absolute riot. So she's a lot of fun to talk to. Um, all right. So, hey, tickets are available for the 2018 Flower City Comic Con at these locations no way, and really? around Rochester. Uh, it's a long list. First Print Comics, 13th Verse Comics, Blades for Life at Puff Palace, End Zone Collectibles, Rhinos Comics and Collectibles, Comic Book Heaven, All Heroes Comics, Comics Etc., Yankee Clipper, House of Cards, Hammer Girl Anime, and Wonderland Comics. Try to get your tickets ahead of time, if you can. Uh, and if you don't want to go to a particular location, you can go ahead right on to the Facebook uh, or to the FC3 website. And uh, right on our website, you'll be able to go ahead and purchase your tickets. Uh, they will be a little more expensive at the door if you come the day of the show. Uh, but for a weekend pass, typically it's going to be 25 For Saturday, it's going to be 20 And if you show up just on Sunday, it, that will be a $15 ticket. And just to show you what a bargain that is, seriously, mm-hmm. that's all day. You get all day worth of entertainment. You mm-hmm. got guests, panels, wrestling. I went to go see Avengers again yesterday. Tickets were 15 bucks per, per person. Per person for a two-hour movie. For a two-hour movie. Yeah. Oh, a little more than two hours. but Yeah, two-and-a-half-hour yeah. movie. You know, so for twenty dollars, you can show for all day sa- Saturday, yeah. or you can just drop twenty five bucks all weekend. You're going to have the full wrestling program. You're Trump. going to have all of VIP row, the vendor floor, which is going to have one hundred and thirty vendors, artists, wow. and exhibitors. Um, you know, we're going to have three full panel rooms, two main stages. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a board game room. We're going to have a video gaming room. We're going to have the Starship Bridge Simulator. That was fun last year. I spent some time in there. That last was good year. stuff. Yeah. We're going to have a great escape room. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have the cosplay contest. We're going to have programming into the night on Saturday. We're not stopping the show at 7. We're going to be doing it. But we'll talk more about that right. next week. Um, and, Chris, Microsoft is also coming this year, too. Microsoft is bringing a VR rig for the video gaming room. Meet yeah. and greet Bill right. Gates? No. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, you'll see him in virtual reality. Okay. So. I won't be able to so do there's, the there's a ton reality. of stuff going on. And uh, uh, there's a roller derby demonstration. Roller derby demonstration. I don't think we're having other any of the other demonstrations. Well, we're going to have magic shows. We're definitely having. Well, we'll talk more about that next week. Yeah. So this week we are just focusing on the people, and then the week after that we're going to talk about the panels and the activities, and then the week after that we're all going to be sleeping in. So, <laughs> <laughs> so all right, good as stuff. Much hey, as we can. Everyday heroes is a usual spot. We don't have one this week, but not all heroes wear keep capes. Keeps cape. They don't wear keeps either. Those are heavy. <laughs> Tomato tomatoes. Who is your hero? Do you know a fireman, a police officer, a nurse, an EMT, or military personnel, a teacher, a librarian? Who is your personal hero? If so, let us know about that person, and we will give them a shout out on the air. Please send your nominations to FC Three Monkey Business at Gmail. Dot com. As long as we're doing that, uh, yeah. I, my brother is a retired fireman, and a, a friend of mine that I met through my brother mm-hmm. is retiring after 28 years really? on the Rochester Fire Department. So shout out to Tom Drofner. If you Absolutely. Know, if you know Tom Drofner, he retired uh, just yesterday. Congratulations, day, Tom, so. and thank you for your 28 years with us. I'm, uh, I'm actually In glad you guys uh, that, brought that up. Hang on a second. Ray, what was that? I'm glad you guys brought that up because... Uh, my cousin Angel uh-huh. is a uh, uh, he used to be in the army. Uh-huh. Uh huh. My cousin Andrew was in the Marines. Nice. Um, my other co- my friend uh-huh. was in the Marines at the current moment. Uh, so you know some folks. <laughs> my friend Andrew's in the army. I was in Starfleet. <laughs> and uh, I'm actually going to school to be an EMT. Yes, I knew that. So you're going to be on our list one of these days. One of these and days. Sherry, what were you saying? It wasn't me. It, oh. it was me. See, it, Sherry and Monk. It, it is. <laughs> It, this is Memorial Day weekend. Yes, it and is. There are, you know, or D, a lot of heroes that never came home. So right. you know, make sure you mm-hmm. take some time, not only you know this week, but all the time to remember those heroes that didn't come home, um, who you know went and served our country. Um, freedom isn't free, so always remember that when you're exercising your freedoms on a daily basis. Absolutely. Thanks for that, D. Good, good shout out there. Okay, so we're gonna. Run around from that, and we're going to throw out the question of the week. 
I need reverb on that sometime. Uh, let me, uh, let me see. If we, can we throw know, some reverb in there? Let me see if I can figure out how to do Rub that. some funk on that. <laughs> I do, hmm. I'm not that smart. That we'll we'll work on it for a future yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. We'll I'll do it for a future it episode. The uh, question, question. Oh, the, the, the wee, wee, Isn't wee. that right, Chris? What's that? Play that funky music, play that fun- No, see that? I have to leave the room if you play that song. There's a story <laughs> behind that. I'll tell it someday. All right. So our question of the week. What fictional character would you love to see end up as the doctor's companion and why? Can it be any from like any fictional character? Any Ooh. fictional character that has not been on Doctor Who or oh. a spinoff of Doctor Who. Okay, so somebody, yeah. not, somebody who has not already been a Doctor's companion. I've got I one. Got I have one. to think of another question. All right. So, <laughs> so okay. Who are my I got ones? Just say your name. Billy. And D's got one. B, Billy and D. So Billy, go first. Uh, someone that's had many adventures in many different time periods. Bugs Bunny. There you go. <laughs> Bugs Bunny. Okay. And I love which that doctor? answer. Which hmm? doctor? Which doctor would we put Bugs Bunny? with? Tenant's my favorite. So okay, I'm so throw him Tenant. Ten and Bugs. That's a combination. D. Who do you got? Oh my God! <laughs> Chris is <laughs> contemplating the, the. Chris is now contemplating the, the the depth of where that one goes. The fan fiction on that one. Oh seriously. <laughs> uh, now D, go ahead. Deadpool. Deadpool and the Doctor. <laughs> Oh my god. I have to ask which doctor would you would you pair Deadpool uh, up with? See, I am not a Doctor Who fan, so I don't know who he would butt heads the most with. Ten hit. Ten, oh, no, <laughs> no. Nine. 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 I think it would have to be Eccleston Nine. or Capaldi. No, yes. Eccleston Nine. or Capaldi. Definitely. Yeah. Capaldi. Oh my god. Deadpool and Capaldi would be hilarious. <laughs> the snark would be hysterical. Oh my god. This I and, mean the episode with Robin Hood. Yeah. Yes. No, it'll it'll be a lot like that, only way worse. Oh, Monk, Monk, how's this for a combination? Capaldi, so it'd be Doctor Twelve, Deadpool, Mm. and River. Oh, oh, Lord, just the (laughs) fact. I could I could just see all the 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 questions coming toward Deadpool. What's with you and the unicorn? Yeah, yeah. Or or Deadpool (laughs) and Captain Jack in the same scene? Oh man. Yes, <laughs> I, I think River and Deadpool would gang up on him. Yeah, that's true. That's a thing. And that's then an he'll just thing. take his swords and put them and put them right through. Um, who else? Sherry, do you got one? I do. I'll throw it. Okay. Let's hear it from the Evil Dead. Oh my God, <laughs> Bruce F. and Campbell, absolutely. Yes. Um, now, which doctor he are you thinking? Be... Um. Hmm. Uh, pretty much any of them, but actually, I want to change my answer slightly. Okay. Not Ash. Were you a Xena fan? Oh my gosh, Lucy Zena? Lawless. At, at, how oh, okay. at who? Bruce Campbell's character on Xena. Okay, the, there you go. The King of Thieves. Right, right, right. And we got to put him with somebody really serious. Uh huh. So I would say probably like, like the first doctor. Yeah, like it would be number one or or number nine maybe. Yeah, one or nine. So, how about you, Ian? Do you have any ideas? Like a, a fictional character to hang out with the doctor. Sam and Dean. Sam and Dean. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam, what's with the jelly babies? <laughs> We're trying. Are we trying to do the super hulak thing? The super hulak. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think. I mean, th- Sam and Dean already crossed over with Scooby Doo, so why can't they why cross over with Doctor Who? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I was actually going to say Sherlock, so you know. <laughs> so, so we're headed in the Super Who Lock territory. I've got, got two. Yeah. I've got two combinations that I think would that would be interesting. Uh, my first one would be Doctor Number Three, John Pertwee's, with Hercule, Hercule Poirot from the Agatha Christie uh, mysteries. Nice. Okay. You got that same that that flair for then slightly flamboyant character. Um, Twelve and Spock. Hmm. Oh lord, oh, wow. that's Which a very Spock? interesting combination. Twelve, 12 and Spock. <laughs> I think. Which Spock? Which Spock? Um, no, the original Leonard Nimoy. I, I mean, I, no, no shade to Zachary Quinto, but it'd have to be Leonard Nimoy and Peter Capaldi. Because two Cause legends on screen. They're, they're slightly different Spock. I know they are. That's why I asked. Yep, so I definitely <laughs> would be going with Nimoy's Spock. Right around Wrath of yeah, Khan. I could see Quintos. I could see Quintos. See, Quinto I would pair up with, with Tenet. Because yeah. you have the younger vibe going on. And, and Quintos was a little bit more 
you 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 would see the emotion simmering underneath a little bit more with yeah. Quinto Spock. But with Leonard Nimoy, it was just no. I've got this. No, that's absurd. No, you're you're silly, and this is why I'm better than you. You know. <laughs> I think I got two. You got two. I think so. All right. Fire so, off number one. I would say number nine, Doctor Number Nine. Okay. Because of the serious yeah uh, nature to himself, but I like the whole serious, funny kind of ordeal all the time in shows. Ordeal, yeah. So I would take Gabriel Iglesias. Gabriel Iglesias is not a fictional <laughs> character. Oh, but think about it. <laughs> I know. I know. Seriously, you team up nine with Fluffy. You know that's that is something's going to happen there. Go ahead, Ian. I figured it out. What do you you got an idea? The newer Scrooge McDuck with Tenet. Oh my god! The newer Scrooge McDuck is Tenet. Tenet. That's that's the point. awesome. So he'd be talking to himself the entire episode. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm on a loop. I love Scrooge McDuck. What show is he on? So now with David Tales. Tenet? So the new uh, Ducktales. They're, they're rebooting Ducktales, yeah. and no David kidding. Tennant's going to provide the voice of Scrooge McDuck. It's already been out. Huh. Oh, is it already it's out? It's already uh, out. And, uh, where is it? Is it on Netflix? Uh, it's on uh, Disney XD. Disney XD. But okay. to be completely honest, as a fan of Ducktales uh-huh. and, and Disney myself. Mm-hmm. They do a pretty decent job. Okay. I'm going to look for it. it. Came out August uh, 12th. I, got, I think okay. I got one more. Okay, throw out your well, one more. Okay, so. What's that? Chris hasn't gone yet. Well, we're going to let Chris wrap it up. Chris and Monk get to wrap okay. it up. Uh, I, was, I would say t- Tenant. Tenant? I like Tenant. Yes, I get and, that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would say Ziggy from Power Rangers RPM. And I'm saying this. Well, I, I'm going to explain it. Um, please do, because I have no clue who you're talking uh, about. <laughs> Ziggy is, is is the guy that accidentally uh-huh. became a ranger. Okay. So and he didn't want to be. At, uh, he just keeps stumbling into things? He, he, was, he was that guy. And he was the comedic relief. The accidental So I hero. feel like he would accidentally become the companion to the doctor. Okay. And be like, eh, I'm stuck here. Might as well go through it. Make the most of it. <laughs> Make the most of what I got. All right. Chris, bring us home. Kaylee from Firefly. And? Oh, pretty much any one of the doctors. Any which one of them? With the, with the TARDIS. So, um, Matt Smith. Uh-huh. Uh, I, you know what? Bef- uh, Matt, uh, Kaylee and, and Levin, I think, would be an excellent combination, especially when he started trying to fix something and he would be hovering underneath the console in his little sling working on, on the circuits and stuff, and she's sitting there pointing out how he got it all wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a great combination. I like that combination a lot. Hey, well, Monk, what do you think? Monk, you got a combo for me? Oh, man. No, I, I really don't. Like, my head keeps going to different superheroes, and so far the two that my head keeps going to are either Captain America or uh, Red Arrow from Young Justice. Oh, I would wow. love to know who you pair with Red Arrow. I was thinking, like, Matt Smith, just because it'd be funny to watch the silly guy go with the grumpy archer. <laughs> <laughs> But are we are we talking Red Arrow when he becomes Arsenal? Or are we talking Red Arrow when he's one most definitely a hole? Definitely Red Arrow, not Arsenal. Red Arrow. Okay. Ah. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this one up on that. And so here we are at the end of yet another lovely and delightful podcast with our our regular family. And this has been Monkey Business, a product of the Mighty Monkey Corporation, purveyors and producers of the Flower City Comic Con coming at you June 9th and 10th of 2018 at the Rochester Riverside Convention Center. Love us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on Patreon, buy tickets because we'll see you soon. This show's right around the corner and uh, hang in there and have a great week. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs>